Hello folks, welcome to the third video of my eShop demonstration. Today I'm going to mainly explain about the sign up validation process. So without further ado, let's get into this. First let's go to our web browser. Then let's go to our sign in UI. So as you can see, users can sign into their accounts using their emails and their passwords. I'll explain about this remember me checkbox and this forgot password option on later videos. You can see our sign in button here, then you can see our new to eShop join us now button here, which takes us to the sign up part. So now let's check out our database. As you can see, there's a single registered user here in our database. Let's try to sign in as him. We are back again on Chrome as you can see. Let's enter his email address. Let's enter his password. As you can see, we are getting an alert as success. This says that now we are successfully signed into eShop and now we can use its services. Let's check out our codes to see what this sign in part is all about. Now we are on index.php file inside Visual Studio Code. Here inside this index.php file, I added IDs to my input fields like this. We are adding IDs like this because we are carrying out input field data to the JavaScript side using Ajax method. Then as you can see, I am using sign in button to call sign in JavaScript function from here. Okay, let's go to our JavaScript file, shall we? So you can see my sign in JavaScript function here inside this script.js file. I am grabbing those sign in input field elements using those IDs here from this side. Then I am keeping those as JavaScript variables from this side for the ease of use. Then I am adding a new JS form data from here. Then I am appending those grabbed input field data to the form from here. As you can see now I am adding a new XML HTTP request to send our request to login process.php file. You can see the login process.php file here. Then as you can see here I am using already state change to find out the current state of our request. Then from here I am sending our request form to the login process.php side using the post method. Now let's go to our login process.php file shall we? So as you can see here I am grabbing those receiving input field data from the javascript side from this login process.php side. Now from here we are starting the sign in validation process. So this part checks out whether the email field is empty or not. If it is empty we can't continue our sign in process. Then this part checks out are there less than 100 characters on the email field. If there are more than 100 characters we can't continue our sign in process. Then this is the php's own method to validate whether inserted email is valid or not. To do this validation process they are actually using the add symbol of the email and dot after the domain name. Then this part checks out whether the password field is empty or not. Then this part checks out does that filled out password contain more than 5 characters and less than 20 characters. Then this search query checks out is there a user record with that email and that password in our database. If there was a matching record on our database this gives an alert as success. It means user has logged into the account without an issue. If that person who was trying to log in wasn't on our database, this gives an error alert as invalid email address or account password. Let's go back to our web browser to see this validation process and those error alerts in action. Let's try to sign in without filling out the email address. As you can see, now we are getting an error alert as please enter your email address. Okay, let's try to sign in with the fake email address with more than 100 characters. So as you can see, now we are getting an error alert as email address must have less than 100 characters. Let's try to sign in with the fault email address without the at symbol. Now we are getting an alert as email address is invalid, please enter a valid one. Let's try to sign in with the incorrect email address without a dot after the domain name part to see what happens. As you can see, we are getting the same error alert as before. Email address is invalid, please enter a valid one. Let's try to sign in without filling out the account password field. So as you can see, now we are getting an error as please enter the password of your account. Okay, now let's try to sign in with the password with less than 5 characters and the password with more than 20 characters. As you can see, we are getting the same error alert for both of those incidents, which is incorrect password, password must have 5 to 20 characters. Let's try to sign in with correct user data for one last time. As you can see, we are getting the alert that we were expecting, success. As you can see, our success alert is green and appears with a smiley face. But our error alerts were appearing in red with a cross mark. Let's see what those are all about. Let's go back to the code. As you can see here inside this view, we are using bootstrap's alert danger class to get that red color to our error messages. For that cross mark, we are using one of those icons provided by bootstrap 2. For those situations when we are getting a response text as success, we are changing bootstrap's alert danger class with bootstrap's alert success class to get that green color. 
and we are changing that cross mark to a smiley face icon that was provided by Bootstrap 2. And as you can see, I am using this JavaScript file to control those incidents. So folks, now I am going to wrap up my third demonstration video. Stay tuned for the fourth one. See ya.